Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Lore and Chill episode 2. Today we're doing another Bloodborne review by a guy named Maxer. The title reads, Defeat Gods Doll Waifu Simulator. Um, so... <laughs> Don't really know what to expect, to be honest, but I'm quite excited. A lot of you guys recommended this to me. We're starting Dark Souls Remastered on Monday, so I want to get as much Bloodborne uh, out before we start that. We're very close on 8,000 subscribers, which is crazy. So if you haven't subscribed, consider doing it if you want to be a part of the journey. As always, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. And without further ado, let's jump in. Oh my god, I forgot to turn on my Halloween lights. Hold up, guys. It's still spooky season. Nice. Let's get into it. The video has spoilers. Bloodborne is a love Jesus and horror Christ. RPG. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> Hold up, man. Uh, let, let's restart that. That was two, two seconds worth of stuff? My god. The video has spoilers. Bloodborne is a Lovecraftian horror RPG that no one understands by definition, where the player is free to attack hordes of human children at will and consume their innards. If that in-depth and engaging anti-baby gameplay appeals to you, keep listening because it gets worse. In this game, you play as John Bloodborne, a foreigner incapable of speech without the use of sign language, and stricken with Habsburg disease, comes to the ancient city of London seeking treatment for the sins of his cousins. In doing so, he will begin hallucinating talking dolls, spider people, and the great people. Journeying further, uh, John Blood- Okay, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Dude, that was so much information in 30 seconds. Holy fuck. Damn, this guy's good. We're in for a ride, clearly. I know how long that would take to edit, literally those 30 seconds. This video is almost 18 minutes long, so... Anyways. <laughs> That was a lot. Born becomes conscripted into the service of a gay elder god and the 60-year-old man he keeps as a pet, and is given the ultimate task of killing an invisible infant in order to cure his anemia. To accomplish said Herculean task, the player must journey through dark forests, terrifying nightmares, and the meth-ridden alleyways of a post-Brexit Britain, slaying monsters, exploring, and tricking women into being impregnated by God so you can consume the child. This game is an excellent realization of a Metroidvania with something new around every corner, a great action RPG, which pits you against insurmountable odds and extreme challenges, and has a gripping story and lore about discovering the Eldritch truth. So, if you can, play it yourself, because I'm not going Holy. to hold back on the details. It's no secret that my reviews are entertainment first, so I don't suggest using me as genuine advice. Okay, that's good to know. Ugh. However, most people can't play this game ever because you have to buy a $400 magical <laughs> box sold by Already the wizard it, Sony in order to experience it. And even then, you get to see it in an amazing 30 frames per second yep. with no anti aliasing. But honestly, once you get into it, man, you forget about it. Seriously, it is such a flawless game. Would I love a 60 FPS? Would I love a remaster version? Absolutely. And I'm sure we'll get it one day, guys. We just gotta keep asking for it. This game to PC, I beg of you. In fact, I can assume that a lot of people watching this video will basically never play the game, but keep watching because I'm hilarious and original. Do that, <laughs> and I can give you the full, unfiltered, uncensored, unsubstantiated, and unsportsmanlike experience that is Bloodborne. <laughs> what an amazing intro. Holy shit. The gameplay is what makes this game great, and the Facts. easiest way to describe it is simple but complicated. On a simple level, your baby brain is responsible for only two tasks, dodging and hitting. Yep. And dodging in this game renders you temporarily invincible. Sounds easy, right? Wrong. Because every <laughs> single enemy is adjusted to keep pace with you. Basic enemies are basically able to whoop your ass into fucking non-existence. Every encounter, therefore, is tense and engaging. When you kill someone, it's because you were faster and had more meth yep. than they did. On a complicated level, you have a gun, and normally bullets hurt <laughs> people, but in London, and bullets are a suggestion, like the in Geneva London. Convention. Here in England, it's all about the knife bins. Except when you shoot somebody mid-attack, you gain the mystical and arcane ability to plunge your fist through their ribcage like Mortal Kombat and rip out their heart, which is considered rude and a slight annoyance. This extends to behind them if you charge an attack, which sometimes causes you to reach up a pig's asshole and rip out the prostate like fruit by the foot. <laughs> I love this already. I gotta say, I love this already. He's explaining it so well. This is what the game is, but the way he's explaining it is just so raw and amazing. <laughs> this game is so high paced and exhilarating that it makes it so intense. I've mentioned this in the past, but the rally system 
for me is what really makes this game hard. You're constantly trying to get your health back by putting yourself in the riskiest of situations. But honestly, it just makes it so much fun. You could be fighting the most simple enemy and in a second he could drag you. Like honestly, I feel like going into Dark Souls might feel a little bit slow, but you know, still looking forward to it, still excited. But it's a fighting style that I don't think I have ever seen in a game before or will I ever see in the future. And that's kind of sad. For the people that have been watching my Resident Evil 2 playthrough, you guys have seen that I'm constantly trying to visceral attack bosses, which obviously doesn't work. I'm trying to be more aggressive than I should, and it's all because of this damn game. Anyways, man, let's continue. This is too good. Side note, the most optimal farming route for currency in this game is called Murgo's Pig Fisting Route. See, I changed the webpage, and in this route, you sneak up behind this guy and do him the dirty. Yeah. Then entice these two swindler bastards to be mauled to death by members of Organization 13. Repeat 50 <laughs> times. On a complicated level, every single weapon in the game has two different modes with two different so movesets. cool. And transforming between them gives you special attacks, in addition to running attacks, plunging attacks, 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 On a theoretical physicist level, your character memorizes squiggly lines and fridge art created by gods for passive bonuses that work regardless of weaponry. My favorites are more money, more money, and more money. Yeah. Big stack. Finally, on a meta-theoretical <laughs> chiropractic level, every weapon is customizable with different gem slots that give differing effects yep. for your attacks. And there are different types that can literally change all of the stats of the weapon, like making a fucking spear do more damage based off of intelligence. There's definitely more and a lot of strategy in how you love Bro, this video is so intense. <laughs> I love it. I <laughs> I wish I could edit this fast, bro. I don't know if you guys would watch like an hour long playthrough of me doing this and also videos. Bro, I give this guy props. We're three minutes in and this guy's probably done more edits than I have done in a year worth of content. Like, <laughs> Kudos to you, bro. You're fucking sick. Edgy and how you level up your character, but I assume that you know how to level up in a fucking video game. But with all this combat prowess, you may be wondering, Maxor, who are these crusty abominations <laughs> that you're fighting on screen? Well, to Disgusting. learn that much, we're going to have to delve into the lore. Yes. So buckle your britches, bitches, because I'm this ready. shit is wild. If I say something questionable, just accept it as fact. Nice. I can be trusted. 60 years ago, 20 rowdy college students took their education extremely seriously because they found woman Cthulhu. She was just in a portable toilet downstairs. <laughs> also, because they were bored, they beat to death a god of the sea with some bats, but that's a story for later. It turns out the entire world is ruled and created by a race of elder gods beyond human comprehension called the Great Ones. Right. Figuring this out, they got Cthulhu's blood and were like, we can make a religion out of this because it turns out the blood can heal people which is really good due to all the knife crime so everyone starts drinking it a little too much and they get the money to build 36 cathedrals 36. but it turns out eventually the blood turns you into a werewolf so the church hires a guy named german to go fight the beasts with an organization known as the hunters but there's too many beasts so he gives up now the knife crime is increased even more and german sort of goes insane and creates a life-size doll of one of his students who is an eight foot tall amazonian he also can okay right right it is confirmed right this is the this is confirmation. German made the doll out of uh, out of Maria, a student of his who he was in love with. He is such a simp, and I love it. He also canonically has sex with it. The moon god. Okay, he had sex with the doll. Okay, well, well, we kind of knew that already. <laughs> It's fucked up, man. For some reason, kind of takes notice of this and is like, all right, listen, I'm building a suicide squad. I will bring your waifu to laifu if you serve me for all time as my slave. German reasonably thinks that this is a great deal and is imprisoned in a dream. Right. This is where you come in. See, the moon god assassinates baby gods for fun, but needs a hitman to go into the real world to do it since he's confined to the ninth dimension. So in addition to fighting all manner of giant beasts and uncovering dark secrets, the true aim of this game is to commit infanticide. There's enough bullshit here to fill tax legislation, so comment your own poorly summarized Bloodborne lore below. And for the rest of us non-shills, we have ample time to explain more of what makes this game great. Nice. Yes, you have been jailed. I die. am talking about bosses before I talk about the levels. In most video games, bosses cap off areas, but in Bloodborne, areas are preambles to a dick flag, yep. and nothing will challenge your skill in quite the same way. Except for the goddamn Witches of Hemwick, oh, who have placed the, worst. the game for disability access. You can probably tell that Bloodborne is a hard game. We don't even know if a games journalist can beat it. But it's hard <laughs> in a fair way that tests your skills and reaction time, except for Lawrence, but I'll get back to Lawrence later. What's the best boss bosses apart, music? The challenge makes it feel like you're a really small dude jabbing a toothpick into a building sized deer demon that is facts dude this game does an incredible job at making you feel the most tiny speck of dust in this world 
and I love it. So yeah, I would be impressed if he killed that. But not only that, unlike Dark Souls, every single boss reacts meaningfully to how you attack them. Large beasts can have their bones cracked and their tendons right. wound into a slinky. Bone boys can be knocked over and have their marrow shipped. And human enemies will wince and recoil when they see your height difference. As well, every <laughs> boss punishes you for cowardice and actively discourages backpedaling with their forward momentum, causing every fight to be an elaborate dance with a thrilling back and forth. That's Unless true, you're man. fighting Braum, it's who a is dance. the really hungry caterpillar if he had a legion of arachnid slaves Gross. who threw their heads underground like ostriches. We don't talk about him. And while we're on the subject of bad bosses, this motherfucker, let me tell you something, the humanoid bosses in this game are paradoxically the most dangerous. But Mikalash is a psychological hazard worst. that will hurt you personally. Seek, this boss bro. literally feels like cut content because the fight centers around chasing him yeah. and his direction depends on RNG, making him an actual speedrun killer. Right. When you corner him, he uses one attack and then you chase him again where he gains the power to insta-kill you. God bro, I'm actually so upset that I didn't kill this guy in one go. I just had no idea what the fuck was going on. That, that fight was chaotic for me. It took me two tries, but it should have taken one. Like, this guy actually has just one attack. It, well, and, and the one that instantly kills you. That one got me. I forbid you're hit by it because that's 10 minutes gone. Yep. Here's a tip. Save up 10 poison knives and steal from your family if you must. Then wait until he jumps down this hole. Poison him repeatedly and watch him spaz the fuck out until death. Well, that's you smart. Thank me. But as a result of everyone who isn't Miko shit, conquering a boss in this game is absolutely rewarding yes. at a level that other games cannot match. Yep. It's only because the odds are stacked against you in ways that don't feel bullshit most of the time that conquering them is the main reason I play. And their fights are undoubtedly the best I've ever done in video games. Yep. But that isn't most of the time in the game. In fact, a lot of your time is spent exploring the areas, so let's get into that. Lesson Love 1 in it. area design. Where the fuck am I going? <laughs> Exploration is the name of the game, except it's called Bloodborne. Only this time, you don't bring smallpox and kill 20 million people. We're looking at a solid 10 this time, because the main enemies in this game are British townspeople. It's how the developers made sure you didn't feel bad about killing them. The plague of beasts infecting London causes so people's fun, teeth though. to become beast-like, makes you aggressive at night, and slurs your speech. <laughs> so it's up to you Yo, this is too good, bro. To all my British fans, how do you guys feel about this? Do you guys agree with this or? I mean, it's, it's just humor, okay? It's just, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you, okay? I just wanted to say that because I love you guys, but anyways. Stop them as a hunter should. If you don't look up where to go next in this game, good fucking I didn't. I didn't look up once. Look, people get lost all the time. Get used to it. Yep. This game doesn't do exploration like, oh, look, there's loot in this hallway. <laughs> My dopamine's gonna go crazy. That's baby shit. This is daddy's exploration where you find a route back to a place you were in 10 hours ago. And I hope you weren't expecting a mini map or any map. Every nope. single hallway is a rabbit hole of discovery and your hand isn't held. Case in point, Cathedral Ward is a level but feels like a hub area yeah. because it connects to fucking everything. And where you start the game is in the middle of a loop-de-loop -loop involving Holy torturous Holy shit, experience. that's what the map looks like? like <laughs> that was crazy one of you guys actually sent a couple of the maps individually on the discord which you should join link in the description join the maiden list gang but look at seeing them all together like that, that was crazy i i am a big fan of the way this game develops like the map and everything there's no compass there's no map there's no little guide nothing it's fucked, but I feel like it actually helps you kind of like immerse yourself into the adventure, you know, because it's like you're actually just like discovering these areas for the first time and you have no idea where the fuck to go. I find that really nice. It's actually quite exciting. Just look at the fucking map of this game. Everything overlaps. And yes, there is a level <laughs> called Nightmare Lecture Hall. And no, it does not connect to the Altar of Despair, although you would think that. Fittingly, the lecture hall is the smallest area. And more fittingly, 90% yeah. of the combat is graduates throwing cum at you. Oh, the game the also worst. has two completely secret areas that you would not find without the internet. I would tell you how to enter, but I don't want to do calculus. I found it. And what you get at the end? Upper Cathedral Ward is legitimately a horror area in a game loved for its yeah. combat. Because it's filled that was easily the scariest area that in the uh, the nightmare of menses but that's only because there's just giant spiders and weird small people um but yeah, Cath Upper Cathedral Ward is straight out of a horror game. With enemies who act out my greatest fears. Stealing currency permanently gives me fucking chills every time I talk about it. Castle Kanehurst is proof that From Software hates Hogwarts. us all, since the best area in the entire game requires you to go to the Field of Corn in Ohio and trek down Waldo. But it's worth it to invade the house of that parasitic queen <laughs> dwelling in her demented castle so that she may feel the wrath R. of the R. proletariat. R. All we have to do is kill Prince Philip, who guards the way as an eternal lich. On top of this, there are numerous NPCs 
NPCs and NPC quest lines spread throughout the world, all with a series of interactions with each other depending on location and timing. Yep. For instance, you could direct nuns, prostitutes, and Prince Philip to a church run by a lonely black sludge, then perform enough blood transfusions to send the nun into a yandere rage. Or you could direct them to the nice woman who runs the clinic down the street who only wants to help and assist others. Then, nope. take a strange path through the forest and into her clinic to discover that she has been experimenting on all of them in order to create the Blue Man group. And if you want, you can take the umbilical cord away from her schizophrenic ass and eat it. The sky's the limit in Bloodborne quest lines. And you know what my favorite quest line is? The one where you descend into literal hell, yes. with eternal punishment, insanity, and femboy fishing. The scariest of them all. I'm, of course, talking about the DLC. The only DLC the for this game. And if you play through Bloodborne, you have to play through the DLC. You gotta, I'm you not have giving to. you a fucking choice. Yeah. So to learn why, you should play the best expansion ever made since Spore so good Adventures. Honestly, dude, like, if I had just played Bloodborne without the DLC, it still would have been an incredible game. But the DLC took the game and just knocked out of the fucking part. The bosses, the music, the environment. It was the greatest shit ever, man. Ludwig, Maria, bro, even the boss named after me and all of you, Living Failures. That music, bro, if you really go back and listen to it, it starts with like the most like galactic, almost like Imperial Star Wars kind of music. And then it develops into this like beautiful, beautiful melody. Yes, the fight was one of the easiest. It's one of the few that I did in one go, but still very, very top tier kind of fight. That might be an unpopular opinion but just throwing it out there. It's a really cool fight. And then, of course, Lawrence, who destroyed my will to live, but then made me be born again with that amazing OST. Incredible. I listen to it almost every day. Anyways, that's all I wanted to say. DLC, top tier. Jump jungles. Come with me on this amazing journey to find the secrets of the Bloodborne, the old hunters. Yeah! I want you to imagine hell. Now imagine hell written by HP Lovecraft. It will be filled with squids, immigrants, and air conditioning. This DLC has none of that except the squids. For you see, those college kids from the lore section of the video were built fucking different. They experimented on an entire village and possibly beat up a god of the sea so fucking bad that her college- Wait a second. The students experimented on all the creatures in the fishing hamlet? That's that's kind of awesome. I also got to add that area into one of the scariest slash most infuriating and intense out of the whole game, at least for me, dude. I still got to go in and kill those sharks, man. A lot of you guys keep reminding me. I don't want to do it. Probably not going to do it, but I'll try one day in the ninth dimension died. We spent an entire game killing an infant and these guys somehow killed the MILF god. But anyways, in the process of this, it cursed them and all of the hunters to be doomed to a hell upon death where right. they will hunt in a bloodthirsty rage without rest for all eternity. Indistinguishable Fuck. from a political subreddit. Case in point, this is Ludwig. He's the first boss of the DLC and has a reputation for causing refunds. Not because he's bad, but because he's too good for you. The first phase is as difficult for me as realizing that Golden Corral is not actually a real corral. Ludwig took me, I believe, four tries, and I was extremely proud of that. I'd heard that Ludwig was gonna literally take me days, and and I literally saved it for the second episode of the DLC for that reason. But like every restaurant except Golden Corral, the rewards at the end are delicious because his second phase is even harder. Now, I'm not going to lie, this DLC has four bosses and three of the hardest bosses I have ever fought in any video game yep. ever. Yep. So your ass will be clenched the entire time. Yep. And the fact that he's the Still third clenched. hardest is fucking concerning. Some people tell me, Maxor, your videos have gotten me through tough times because Aww. they made me laugh. But like this boss, you are the one who is truly overcoming these challenges. And I believe in your ability to beat both of them. I believe you too, man. Boss lightning round. If you the DLC it. has many such cases of amazing bosses, including Lady Maria, yep. who is the basis for German's extremely creepy eight-foot-tall doll fetish, but we'll get back to that. <laughs> and Orphan of Cause, who was born from the literal dead body of a god. Gross. If you enjoy the sensation of being beaten to death with a sharpened placenta, <sighs> this is the fight for you. You. And as with so everything that From out, Software dude. makes, they threw in a boss that they didn't really finish and called it a day. I'm of course talking about Lawrence, which is a very mundane name for a fire monster locked in hell. Take my <laughs> advice, don't fight Lawrence, you only lose nah, a part you of have to. Since this boss fights you by dropping off his own legs and then violently vomiting and shitting lava everywhere. I've always wanted my game about dynamic dodging and elaborate fencing to be reduced to shitty area denial like it's Team Fortress 2. <laughs> to wrap things up, the music of this game is pretty good, but the DLC music is fucking insane. Yep. I don't know what it is about Japanese composers being able to make better the symphonies best, the than best. the continent that invented them, but just take a listen. <laughs> Ooh, 
roasted. Holy shit, I am alive right now. Have you ever thought, as I do, that this game is just too good? That yes. you would really rather be playing a shittier version of the game, such as the engagement of the Chalice Dungeons. Oh, yeah. I, of course, Jess. They're fine, probably, except for half of them, because Bloodborne has an optional system of infinite dungeon generation mm. for all of those who wish to break free of the shackles of good level design. Let's talk about how, and more importantly, why. Right, Chalice Dungeons. Yeah, I've seen plenty of comments. A lot of you guys told me to not even bother, but a lot of you told me that it is a must. Uh, so, like I said in the last video, one day I will do the Chalice Dungeons because they do seem really fun and, well, let me backtrack. They seem very challenging, which to me is fun because I'm fucked on the head. Just, just let me just get through a couple more Souls games, okay? Then we'll do it. First of all, Bloodborne has a system of dungeons that everyone shares and dungeons that are random. For my footage, I played the shared dungeons that you can be guaranteed the pain you witness on screen is mandatory. One of the biggest strengths of Bloodborne is the ability to have interesting and challenging enemy encounters gently rubbed with the bloodstained hands of Miyazaki. But I don't think I have to explain to you how randomizing almost every encounter in the game could be imbalanced. But fortunately, most enemies you encounter in the Chalice Dungeons are new to spare British oh. people your wrath, so you instead fight SCP-90 but why are we here? It turns out that the entire city of London was built on a go. Celtic burial ground, an ancient civilization called the Tumerians who discovered the healing powers of blood and then mysteriously right. disappeared. Wow, I wonder what happened. This is all cool in theory, but the reality is that most of the time you fight the same four enemies, oh, and the sucks. first three dungeons can be replaced by Simon Says. My cat literally wouldn't notice. The oh. Chalice dungeons are so forgotten that the developers use them to put joke enemies into the game. My favorite is the man who aggressively rolls at you, Stark Naked wearing only his Nikes. The uniqueness also extends <laughs> to the bosses, and they're actually pretty cool, like two Marian descendant oh, watchdog see, and the three overweight men. Do you oh, remember that basic like enemy from like those. two levels? He is the boss now. Rom, he is the boss again. What? The only thing stopping me from throwing myself into a wood chipper is the fact that Miklash isn't back. And if you're going to have replays, you probably want to make sure that they're actually good. In fact, the bosses are so fucking imbalanced that the watchdog fight is primarily comprised of instant kill attacks. Oh, dude. I mean, Sekiro backwards on a keyboard and this shit is too fucking much. Now normally that would be all but the dungeons go deeper. What we have discussed so far is merely the surface and there is a much darker syndicate lying just below. These places you must never venture for they are the save edit dungeons whereby through wizardry the community are able to conjure up deep dark chasms and share them with the rest of the world. Of these secrets there this are only intense, two that I shall bro. reveal to you and the first is the cub dungeon. <laughs> yes you heard that correctly I went to that one. clearly. The cub Dungeon is the name of yes. the most optimal farming route Shout ever conceived by dungeon. the fucking cricket people who do this shit. Whereby the player enters the chasm of place name and watches as a high level boss yeets itself off a cliff. Murgo's pig fisting route can give you 10,000 echoes. This gives 83,000. Yeah. And if you thought that that sorcery was bad, it gets much worse. You can insert anything from the game files by save editing a chalice dungeon anything. This includes cut and unfinished content what? from the game that the developers forgot to delete, like this doggo who attacks you with invisible lightning. Overall, the Chalice Dungeons are bad. They're not actually very fun to play, and yet I love them. Everyone cool. loves them because they allow us to further explore a long dead game with the help of a passionate community. Now before we sign off, I know what you're thinking. Maxor, what about the multiplayer? That I would love to talk about with all the footage I have, Aww. but it's dead. If this game releases on PC, and it better then I will talk about the multiplayer extensively and finally this game and this video would not be complete if I didn't talk about the hunter's dream yes. after all the combat the battles and the difficulty of this game it's nice to have a place to recharge purchase items upgrade weapons quickly sorry that I keep pausing man I just this video is too good and I I, I oh my god we're almost on it's almost over oh I'm sad now the hunter's dream is by far one of the best hubs, probably the best hub I've ever been a part of. Well, there's one hub that, okay, never mind. The way that you would feel, man, coming back to your safe place, to your eight foot tall lady queen. It's nothing like it, man. The music, the way it's designed, it was, it was just so nice knowing that you get to go back to that after a wild few hours in London. Sometimes I listen to the Hunter Stream music just when I'm cooking or doing mundane tasks because Makes him feel special. I'm gonna try not to cry. All right, let's finish this video, man.
curtains and watch as it violently burns to the ground. This is where you'll Sad. find German slowly wasting away as his soul remains captive for an eternity, and his doll waifu that he sold his existence to be with. Same. She talks to you, levels you up, offers you advice, and German says you're allowed to have sex with her. When I fell down and felt defeated, she was there to pick me up. Yes. When I emoted at her randomly, she pretended oh, to be yes. impressed, and she was there, graciously standing in the background of this one shot that I took of myself. She is our waifu now, yes, and the game is. is perfect and complete because she is in it. Now I excuse agree. me as I engage in the supplementary lore material. Should you get the game, yes, absolutely, I am biased. In fact, you should physically enter... Sorry, where can I find this? Sony's headquarters and demand that it be ported to PC. I will be right there with you. Yes. Tasers will not stop me. I would like to thank the corrupt hackers and politicians funneling money into this channel directly from the taxpayer. If Hell you yeah. would like to contribute your funds accrued nice, through extensive dude. federal government corruption, Shout you can these head people. to my Patreon to learn more. I would also like to thank the kind denizens of the Mythbuster Smut Discord who sent me half the memes in this video. And nice. as always, thank you for watching. No, dude, thank you for making it, bro. Damn. That was an experience. An experience that I very much enjoyed. That went by so fast. I feel like I've been recording for five minutes. I love that. I love that video. I'm going to subscribe to Maxer. And <laughs> you, you could also subscribe to to your boy here if you enjoyed this uh this uh guys what the fuck this video has 4.4 million views and i honestly think it deserves more the amount of memes effects zoom ins slides text pop-ups music sound effects like insane dude i edit all of my videos and to edit something like that would take days so i can appreciate the craft man but that does not take away from everything else that he puts in these videos man the script and the way he delivers his lines is phenomenal like this guy is clearly a very high skilled storyteller and i really appreciate that but i want to check out his channel real quick and see what he's all about i'm seeing a lot of elden ring which is great i want to dive into elden ring uh lore in the future as well maybe we can do that while we play dark souls oh shit he has he doesn't really post like that oh fuck oh that's really sad bro two weeks ago two months ago five months ago seven months ago Damn, that is really sad. I I wonder why he's so inconsistent. I mean, probably because his videos take like 10 years to make. <laughs> oh shit. Maxer, if you ever see this, doubt you will, but dude, get back at it, man. You 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 you're fucking sick. Wow, his first video was six years ago. Okay, he's clearly been doing this for a long ass time. I think that might have been his only Bloodborne video, and I'm actually quite sad about that, but Anyways, guys, we're going to leave it at that. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, another episode of Lore and Chill. If you haven't already, subscribe. It would mean the world. We're almost at 8,000. Um, so, yeah, let's try and run up those rookie numbers, man. I'm going to do a couple more lore videos, and then we'll jump into Dark Souls Remastered. So stay tuned for that. And as always, man, I appreciate you being here. Take care of yourself, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.